Good morning friends, welcome back to my channel Coding Environment. This video will be the continuation of the last video where we are going through the creational design patterns. In the last video, we have seen what is singleton design pattern. In this video, we are going to see what is factory design pattern, which is the part of the creational design pattern. So let's see what is factory design pattern. So before we move into this video, Let's see what is the topics I'm going to cover in this complete video. So the first topic which I'm going to cover in this video is what is factory design pattern, a UML diagram for a factory design pattern, followed by a code example and then running that code on an eclipse. So without making any delay, let's see what is factory design pattern. So what is a factory design pattern? A factory design pattern is a creational design pattern which talks about the creation of object in any application. The factory design pattern says that define an interface or an abstract class and let the subclasses decide which object to be instantiated. It is one of the best way to create an object where the object creation logic is hidden to the client. So, let's, so let me explain this factory design pattern using a UML diagram. So if you see here, this part is an abstract class. So what it says that we have to define an interface or abstract class, right? So here we have defined a abstract class whose class name is plan and it has a data member called double and this double is representing nothing but the rates. So we have a method called get rate and then we have a method called calculate bill. So when we go through the code, we will get to know what all these methods are doing. But for a human diagram point of view, you can just assume that there is an abstract class which has a data member and two methods. Now we can extend this abstract class to create the subclasses. So here you can see we are extending this plan class to create a class called A, B and C. So you see here. The factory design pattern says that define an interface. So what we have done, we have defined an interface and let the subclasses decide which object to be instantiated. So here we have created the subclasses also. So plan is an abstract class and class A, class B and class C is the subclasses of this abstract class. Now we have a factory class also which will be used to create the classes of different types or which can be used to instantiate the classes of different types. And this is our client. So here you can see the third point it says that the creation logic is hidden to the client. So if this is my client, which is generate bill, don't know how this factory class is going to instantiate or create these classes. So this is a UML diagram for the factory design pattern. So let me explain this UML diagram by creating the Java codes. So this is the demo code which we are going to use to explain this UML diagram. So here you can see we have an abstract class called plan and here we have a read data member, one method which is get read and one method which will be used to calculate the bill. Then we have a class A which extend this plan. Again, we have a class B which extend this plan and again, we have a class C which extend this plan abstract class. So here you can see this is my abstract class and these classes are nothing but the subclasses of this abstract class. In all the subclasses, because this is the abstract method, we have to create this method body in the subclasses. So here what we have done is created a get rate method and in this we have defined what is the rate of this particular class. So for class A, the rate is 10, for class B, the rate is 20, and for the class C, the rate is 30. Now you can see here, let me go back to my UML diagram, and here you can see this. This is the abstract class, class A, class B, and class C has again get rate method, and here we have defined what is the rate of this class A, class B, and class C. After this, you can see we have a method called get plan factory. So in this we have defined a factory method which will be responsible for creating your classes. So let's see. So this is our get plan factory class and in this if you can see 
we have a get plan factory method the responsibility of this get plan method is to instantiate or create the objects of different classes or you can see the objects of different subclasses so here you can see if the plan type is of type a it will create an object of type a else if the plan type is equal to b it will create an object of type b and if the plan type is equal to c it is going to create the object of type c and then it will return that object using this return object so you can see in this UML diagram that the, if the client is asking it to create an object of type A, it is going and creating an object of type A, right? Here you can see it. If you are passing the plant type as A, it is going to create an object of type A. So that's what it, it will do, right? If the client is asking this factory to create an object of type A, the responsibility of this factory method is to create the object of type A. So here you can see this. In this method, in the get plan type, if you are passing a A string, it is going to create object of type A here. Similarly for B and similarly for C. So this is the factory method. And after that, we have again a client method. And this is nothing but it will pass what kind of object you are trying to create with this factory. So let's see what this method is doing. In this main method, we are creating a get plan factory of this particular uh, factory class which we have defined here and after that what we are doing is we are reading the what kind of object we are trying to create and then for the billing purpose we are trying to pass how many units we are trying to bill. So here if you see in this get plan method so this is the part I am talking about here when you pass the plan name which is a b c it is going to create an object of that particular plan or particular uh, it is going to create the object of that particular subclass and once we have created then using this calculate bill method we can calculate the bill also so let me run this code on eclipse and show you how these things are getting executed so moving to the eclipse now so for the sake of the time, I have already written those classes which I have explained on the PowerPoint in the Eclipse. So let me go through all the classes one by one and show you the classes once. So this is my abstract plan class. It can be interface, it can be abstract class also. So in this, we have a double uh, read data member, then we have a get rate method, and then we have a calculate bill where if you pass the unit, it will calculate by multiplying the units with the rate. And the rate is different for different plans right so here if you see class a extend the plan and then it has a rate of 10 and then class b also extend the plan and it has a rate of b and the rate of the b is 20 and similarly we have class c which again extend the plan in abstract class and then it has a rate of 30 and then this get plan factory is the important class in this class we have defined this factory method which will be responsible for creating the objects of different types. So if you pass the plan type as A, it will create an object of type A. Again, if you pass the plan type of B, it is going to create a plan type of class B. And again, if you pass C, it will create the object of plan type C. And then we have a generate build method, which is the client method. In this, we are going to read what kind of object we're trying to create and then and we'll create that particular subclass type object and we'll calculate the bill according to that object. So let me run this program once and show you how these things are getting executed. So what it is saying is enter the name of the plan for which the bill will be generated. So we have a plan A, plan B or plan C. So let me enter A here and then it is asking for how many units you want to calculate the bill. So suppose I want to calculate the bill for five units. So after this, you can see for the bill amount for class A for five unit is 50. So if you see here, what is the class A rate type? It's 10, right? And the, for the units, what we have passed it as a five, right? So for five unit, the bill amount will be five into 10, which is 50. Similarly, if you run this code again, and pass the object of type B
And this time also, if you want to calculate the bill amount for the five unit only, let's see what is the bill amount you are going to get. It is 100, right? Why? Because for B, the rate is 20. So 20 into 5. Again, for C, if you want to do that, let, let's do it once and see what output we are going to get. It is, uh, we are trying to create object of type C and then for 5 unit, the rate is 150. Why? Because the C, the rate is 30. So 30 into 5 is 150. So this way you saw that using this get plan factory method, we are able to create the object of type A, type B and type C depending on the client, what kind of object it's want to create. So this is the get plan method which was creating that object. So this is all about your factory design pattern. And if, if you ask me clearly, factory design pattern is nothing but a normal factory where the objects are getting created. You, you can assume it as a toy factory or you can assume it as a like a furniture factory. And in this, if I am the client, I am telling the factory to create me a chair, right? I don't know how this factory is going to create the chair. That is totally hidden to me. Similarly, for the factory design pattern, it is also like the client is not going to know how the objects are getting created. It just want that I want the object of type A or object of type B or object of type C. So this is all about your factory design pattern. Uh, hope you like this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel and stay connected. Till then, have a great day and goodbye.